today my guest is Linda Rook. In he had left. It was the most painful thing, the most difficult thing I've ever gone through. Your faith and pass it on. Share the gospel clear and strong. Stand for, claim your heritage of truth. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today my guest is Linda Rook. Welcome, Linda. Well, it's great to be here. So th I'm so glad that you had me on today. Well, I'm really glad to have you. Linda is the author of Broken Heart on Hold. Why don't you show our viewers that book? Now, why don't you tell us the story behind that book? Well, this story is, is really my story. And mm -hmm. um, it evolved out of my own separation. My husband and I were separated for three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very difficult time. It was back in the 90s. And it was not something I wanted. Um, but we were, we had some difficult times. We went through some, about three years of things just not being normal between mm -hmm. us for a little while. And then one Easter, um, I was putting the ham in the oven and, and setting the table and it was all beautiful and my mother was there and we were uh, talking and all of a sudden my husband and I had this big argument and he walked out the door and I thought, okay, this had happened before. I mean, this wasn't unusual that we would have an argument and he'd walk out the door. So I figured he was coming back, but he didn't come back. He didn't come back that night. He didn't come back the next night. Um, and I really didn't even take it seriously for a couple of days. I just thought, oh, he's trying to make a point, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then I, of course, I started taking it seriously and got very worried and, and discovered that he had left. It was the most painful thing, the most difficult thing I've ever gone through. I mean, my heart was just broken. Being separated, I think, is one of the hardest things that people don't realize how hard it is and how alone it is because you know a separated person they're not, they 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 don't have anyone to really be with because usually they're kind of keeping it quiet you know they're mm -hmm. not talking about it and they're not divorced and they're not married and they're not single and so they don't really have anybody to yeah. you know be with and so when we went through this i mean it was it was very lonely and um I tried to find some kind of support, you know, some devotional books or something that could build me up. And I couldn't find anything. I just could not find anything to just give me that spiritual strength. I knew I needed God, but I just, I was too weak. You know, I just mm -hmm. couldn't do it on my own. And so what I ended up doing is when I was going through a particular issue of some kind, I would sit at my computer and I would write until God brought me to a place of peace. Mm -hmm. And I did this over and over and over and over. And God brought, made me stronger, you know, through all of that. And um, so my husband and I actually, we, we did get back together after three years. It was a three year separation. We did get back together and we now have a great marriage. It's really good. But when we got back together, I um, went back and looked at what I'd written, and I thought, I wonder if these could help other people, you know, who are mm -hmm. going through something like this. And so I printed some of them out, and I went and showed them to my husband. And I, I was really kind of nervous about it, you know. I thought, I don't know how he's going to react to this. I said, just read this. and tell me what you think and I went on a bike ride <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. well I came back and my husband said to me Linda this is the best thing you've ever written he said this is a Romans 8:28. Mm -hmm. he said this is a way to take all the horrible things that have happened to us and use it for good and to allow God to use it for something good in mm -hmm. Romans 8:28, 28 is all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his mm -hmm. purpose mm -hmm. and so he said you know, this is a way that it can be a Romans 8.28 for us. So he was so enthusiastic about this book. I mean, he was more enthusiastic than I was <laughs> at times. And I mean, he he just felt so strongly about it. So, so you were both believers when you were married and separated. Yes, we were. Okay. And we were, you know, leaders in the church. And, oh. you know, I mean... Satan doesn't like leaders in the church. <laughs> I mean, he comes against um, 
people that are leaders or having a, a, a ministry or mm -hmm. having an influence for, for good mm -hmm. and tries to find their weakness and that's what he did and so mm -hmm. he attacked us at a very vulner in a vulnerable way mm -hmm. and God knows what he's doing that's right. <laughs> and it turned out for the good so and don't you both have a marriage type of ministry yes yeah one of the things that happened when I wrote this book it was just a book, you know, I mean, I, I felt like, you know, I had a lot to say and I was so excited to be able to share this with women who were separated because I knew how alone mm -hmm. and hopeless they feel. And I knew that I had so much hope to be able to offer them. So I was so excited about it. And so I was so excited just to put it in people's hands, mm -hmm. but I didn't really think there'd be anything more after that. And what happened after that is I started getting all these emails from people. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten continued to just get e just so many emails, and, and I answer them, of course. Mm -hmm. And so that became an online ministry. And then um, in our church, my husband and I, um, well, I had met another couple who had a ministry called Marriage 911. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed by it, and I thought, well, maybe we could do that in our church. So I, we started doing that together, mm -hmm. and that thing has just grown and grown and grown. I mean, we have a hundred people coming to the class. At the beginning, they some of them yeah. drop off, you know, because mm -hmm. that's, you know, they're in crisis. <laughs> but it's just been amazing what God has done through this. So, mm -hmm. so what Satan meant for evil... God just used for tremendous good, and we are very excited about it. That's fantastic. So how did you keep up hope <clears throat> during those three years? I mean, you you didn't decide to divorce. You didn't give up. How did you keep up that hope? Was it through the writing or what? Well, that was one thing I did. Mm -hmm. But basically, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, there really wasn't much out there to help. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I had some, a few friends that came alongside me, and that was very important. You've got to have friends. I mean, and, and so many of your friends really don't understand what you need. A lot of them, they'll say, oh, well, you don't need this. You know, you're, you don't deserve this. You know, you just, you'll find a, a better person. You know, you just go on, move on with your life. You know, some of them, that's mm -hmm. what, what they'll say. Most people don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. Um... Do you something. find that they were, did you find that they were uncomfortable around you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people would kind of avoid you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would kind of walk the other way, you know, I don't know what to say. So yeah. that would be one of the reactions. But there were a few friends, and I actually give um, acknowledgement to them in the book, mm -hmm. that walked alongside me through that time that really helped me a lot. And I quote some of them in the book. Who That's gave me good. some advice and you know ask you asked me what they need to do and some of the things that I tell them is what my friends told me one of the things that um, a person needs to do to start with is to really focus on God and put your circumstances and put your husband or wife whichever the case is you know, on the back burner, focus on God and keep your eyes on God. And that's hard. I mean, it's <laughs> really hard. You're in turmoil and you're, you're on a roller coaster. You're on an emotional mm -hmm. roller coaster. Going from anger to total depression to regret to fear. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all within a few hours' time. You know, you're going <laughs> yeah. all through all of these things. It's really hard to break through that and keep your eyes on the Lord. And one of the things I talk about in the book is building your spiritual muscle. We start off and we're so weak mm -hmm. and we can't keep our focus on the Lord. But as we you know, listen to Christian programming, we spend time in the Bible, we spend time in prayer, we spend time with Christian friends. I was listening to Christian radio, television, anything mm -hmm. I could, going to church all the time. Um, and then one of the big things is having praise music on in the background mm. and I'd have it on all the time you know all just constantly because God inhabits our the praises, praises of his people <laughs> right. and and when you have praise going on around mm -hmm. you it just it just feeds your spirit I have one funny thing that happened one time I I was so dependent on my praise music and I came home from somewhere one time and my daughter was in the house and and I couldn't find my praise. It was a 
back then it was a tape. <laughs> I couldn't find it. And I was running around the house, where is my praise tag? You know, it's like <laughs> so once I found it, I okay. <laughs> praise God. And I, okay. And one of the things that I really encourage people with when we because we will be starting a new class in fact in about a week and a half mm -hmm. and we have small groups and one of the things that I encourage them with, in fact my husband probably does this more than me is he tells people feelings change. Mm. And if, you know, if your husband came to you and said, I don't love you anymore, which happens a lot. I mean, we hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. His feelings six months from now could be totally different. A year from now could be totally different. And my husband is, I mean, he's the one who talks about that the most because I mean, his feelings did change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At one point, he wasn't sure that he loved me anymore, and now, you know, mm -hmm. he, he definitely does. So it's just a, one of the things that I would like to tell people mm -hmm. to make sure they um, realize there is hope because our feelings are so temporary, and mm -hmm. feelings can change. Right. And also to give it time. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't rush into it. Don't make a sudden decision or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I think one of the keys is that love is not feelings. Do you do you help in your class to help people to understand that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So what is love? The well, real kind of love that keeps a marriage together. It's commitment and it's a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, um, and that's one of the problems that we have today, of course, mm -hmm. is that commitment isn't a big core value in our society anymore and um, and so people don't necessarily make that commitment but but it's sometimes a decision I mean and and any of us can see that you know any of us that are married can see that um, even on a monthly basis probably I mean I'm sure that every now and then you're angry at your your spouse and you don't really feel like you love him right then you know I don't really love you right now when you're <laughs> saying that kind of thing to me. So it's a decision, okay? Mm -hmm. But I do love him, you know, and I'll forgive him. So you yeah. have to Forgiveness is a big part of it, isn't it? Oh, that's huge. Yeah. And people don't understand forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, when people get back together, as a matter of fact, and there's obviously lots of forgiveness mm -hmm. that has to take place. And, but some people feel like, oh, I need to forgive. In fact, I remember one woman that was separated and she said to me, I need to forgive him, I need to, I just have a hard time. And, and I said, forgiveness is a decision, again, you decide to forgive, but your heart, you have to give your heart time to catch up with your decision. Mm -hmm. Because you don't, you probably don't feel that, particularly in some really difficult situations, if there's been infidelity or, you know, mm -hmm. different kinds of things. There's two sides of this. So I'll just give an example. Um, you may have a husband who's been unfaithful. He mm -hmm. comes back and he says he's sorry. He really is sorry. Um, and she wants to forgive, so she says, I'll forgive you. But there's this pain in, the, mm -hmm. in her heart. And basically, she wants justice. Mm -hmm. But she's chosen to forgive. Well, he needs to have the grace mm -hmm. to allow her to take the time for the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So there's two parts of that because a lot of times this man or this person or it might be a woman will say, oh, I've told you I'm sorry 10 times. What do I have to do to make you forgive me? Mm -hmm. And basically what happened, what needs to happen is for him just to have the grace to realize it's going to take her time. She is choosing, but her heart has to catch up. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, he has to earn her trust. Mm -hmm. So that is. Not and I've found that with forgiveness, that I can only do it in God's strength, especially when you've been, really been hurt. That forgiveness has to come through God. Absolutely. Because we don't have the power. Because we tend to be so self-centered, we want justice, as you said. We, you know, we're we're thinking about our own pain, and we need to reach the point where we can realize that what Jesus said is. If we want to be forgiven by Him, we have to forgive others. Absolutely. The thing is, too, when you do forgive, when you can finally really forgive, it's so 
such a beautiful, refreshing thing. It's just like standing under a waterfall and letting the <laughs> water pour over you. You know, you have a fresh mm -hmm. heart and soul, and, and it's just a wonderful feeling to, to have been able to really forgive. Mm -hmm. So, but, but like And then said, the love relationship can be even better. Oh, afterwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. After the forgiveness, because it's like I don't know. There's just a a vulnerability that 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 should be in a marriage relationship. That when you've had to forgive one another, even just for a little spat, you know. I don't know about you, but you know, making up is always nicer. <laughs> Well, so, when you work through yeah. something difficult together, mm -hmm. you know, if people do like go through a separation and they mm -hmm. get back together yeah. and they have worked through it, they're going to have a stronger marriage than mm -hmm. probably a lot of people that never were separated. In fact, um, some of our Marriage 911 participants who had reconciled mm -hmm. um, had a, were have at a party mm -hmm. one day and we were all laughing about how we kind of feel like we're like the island of misfit toys <laughs> because we're all broken and we all know it and we can be honest about it and we have a great, you know, we can be really have a great relationship together. So that brokenness and knowing that you've been broken and knowing mm -hmm. that you're not perfect and working through it actually brings you closer together mm -hmm. than a couple that's maybe still trying to act like they're perfect. I think it also um, brings you closer to the Lord. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so. Absolutely. In fact, that's probably the biggest story mm -hmm. because, as I said, I get a lot of emails from people reading this, my book. One of the things that they say to me, um, even those who don't get back together, they'll tell me that even though it was the most painful thing they've ever gone through, it was worth it because it brought them so close to God in a place they never would have been otherwise. Mm. And I hear this so many times and even in our classes too, you know, Hopefully they get back together, but if they, even if they don't, really hanging on to God and letting God show you what He wants to show you. We were separated for a year before I realized that any of it was my fault. You know, for the first year it was completely His fault, mm -hmm. and then God woke me up in the middle of the night, and it was like all of a sudden I just saw myself, and I thought, oh my. I can't, believe, you know, I just saw things that I realized how mm -hmm. I had contributed to the problem. So when you're having that journey with God, He starts showing you things about yourself mm -hmm. that um, you need to change. And, and one of the things that's important to mention at this point, too, is that you're not trying to change just to please your husband or your wife. Mm -hmm. You're changing to be what God wants you to be. And that's different. Definitely. I remember one woman who, you know, her husband had left her and he wanted her to start drinking more and doing all that, and she did. Well, yeah, they got back together for a while and then he left again. You know, that wasn't the basis of coming mm -hmm. back together. But when you're, but when you are really seeking God so that he can show you what he wants you to be, then you're becoming all that he 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 has created you to be and when you get back together if you get back together then you have a more beautiful relationship mm -hmm. than you had before wow so so two beautiful relationships the husband wife and god in the center that's absolutely. fantastic absolutely well you have any new projects coming up yes i do <laughs> yes um i have a new book it's a children's easter book called the bunny side of Easter and it's an exciting little adventure story about the Easter Bunny that actually uh, uses some allegory to use mm. the Easter Bunny to point children to Jesus and okay. help them to understand what Easter is really all about so okay. <laughs> I'm real excited about it well where can people find you online they can find me for this book broken heart on hold dot mm -hmm. com I also have a blog which is um, lindarooks.com. It's L-I-N-D-A-R-O-O-K-S. Mm -hmm. But these are all interconnected, so if they go okay. to Broken Heart on Hold, which is probably easier for them to remember, mm -hmm. they can click over to the blog, or they can even click over to this one. So Okay. Thank you so much for being our guest. Well, thank you, Jean. I love being here. It was fun being with you again. Share